In fact, he's only saw this photo where Sandurum Bachi was blessing Rabne to the land. And he saw the children, Rabne Nambe, Juju Rabne. And he said, very good, very good. I think he felt that was auspicious. The purpose and the whole objective of the Tenzin Gatsu Institute is to further those things which are closest to His Holiness the Dalai Lama's heart. In other words, to, to further his vision. And of course, you'd have to be superhuman in order to catalogue the vision <laughs> of the Dalai Lama. And so we have just chosen three particular projects to bring to the United States a selected group of Tibetan scholars who have graduated from the Geshe and Kempo programs in the monastic universities in India and Nepal and give them university level courses in subjects like psychology, philosophy, neuroscience, and Western culture, and so on. And his oneness was extremely pleased when we told him about this. And he said, yes, it's quite very true. Our monk scholars need to be brought up to date. He said that they have exceptional intelligence. The only thing is, it's a 1,000 years old. <laughs> the second project we have is with our land uh, near Albany. The center there is called Dongyi Nijeling. And there we want to try to provide a place, a home, a community, an environment for the many Tibetan and Himalayan people who are now living in this part of the United States. And the third project that we mentioned to His Holiness was um, an idea to work with the Compassion and Lojong teachings. Because so many people have said to us, these teachings are just extraordinary. They are so practical. They're so effective at transforming the mind. If only they could be translated, if only they could be put into action, they could have an enormous effect on society. And so our task here is to try to reach out, perhaps to reach out to leaders, to professionals, to create uh, a practical training in these teachings that can be trained in by these people and then implemented in their workplace and in then create a more ethical and more compassionate society. And so we presented these three projects to His Holiness. He said, uh, Oh, wonderful. wonderful. Very good. Since many years we developed uh, some kind of very unique uh, close relations. Uh, so now uh, you have I think, a major program uh, of Sandra uh, where some of the, implement, the implementation as a program. I'm extremely happy. I appreciate it. And so we invited him to visit the center and to come back and give a major teaching as soon as he possibly could. I believe with good wishes of cooperation of all of you, we may be able to uh, fulfill this given task. On behalf of six million Tibetan people, I wish to take this opportunity to recognize in the top of my heart the support extended to us by the American people and their government. Your continued support is critical. I think this uh, day not only is a historic moment for all the Tibetans, but it is actually a historic moment in history of America as well. Rigpa Sangha has uh, served the Western world uh, for decades now with the uh, Dharma and the spiritual uh, path to travel on. I feel it is you know, my responsibility uh, to help you mainly also because of the devotion and the loyalty that Sojir Rinpoche had for His Holiness. I think that's one reason that many of us uh, who are closely associated with His Holiness have always felt special friendship with Rinpoche and with the Rupa Sangha. You know, these two uh, powerful entities joining in one will no doubt bring great benefit. In Tibetan 
we have the saying that uh, timely ripening of aspiration. You know, sometimes uh, even if you work very hard, it is not just about working hard to fulfill something or come to any fruition, but timely ripening of aspiration. The vision of uh, uh, Sohya Ramachai and the blessings of His Holiness the Dalai Lama coming together, it's, uh, it's a very powerful dynamite. <laughs> there are some uniqueness in particular part of the earth. Buddha have chosen particular place to uh, take birth and particular place chosen as a practicing and achieving the enlightenment. The spiritually elevated person can empower the place and in turn the place can empower the people living in it.